Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jules, and I am the CEO here at Frontrunner, but I also work alongside our team with our whole frontline group um, that work with all of our clients um, and our support team. So, um, yeah, I'm sure most of you have chatted with me, and if not, give me a call. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll uh, let Ashley introduce herself. Yeah, hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Ashley Montroy. Uh, head of marketing here at Frontrunner. Uh, I take care of a corporate team that handles Frontrunner's marketing and built an agency inside of Frontrunner probably four years ago now um, to handle social media and search engine marketing for funeral homes. Um, we take care of probably about 150 of each of those uh, social and search clients. So a lot of the things we talk about come from experience inside that agency too. So we can share with you what, what's working for funeral homes. Um, but yeah, great to have you on. If uh, anyone has any questions throughout uh, the webinar today, drop them in the chat, um, drop them in the Facebook Live uh, comments section in the Q&A and we will, we will answer absolutely anything. Um, today is all about lead generation. Um, so we are going to be covering um, a, just a lot of about lead generation. I think everyone's, you know, everyone's starting to kind of get used to their new normal and and what do leads look like? What do new families growing that growing the business look like? Um, so we're going to share uh, just some of the some of the tools that funeral homes are using from Frontrunner that um, are helping them generate leads online. And we're also going to walk through. I think there's two. Is there two or three? Three. Um, three funeral homes that are doing uh, just different campaigns online. Um, some of them we run. Some of them we don't. Um, and share the results that they've got from just putting in a new tool or a different different way of thinking about a campaign. So uh, we did plan, prepare a little slide deck um, so you guys can follow along. Cause I think that's been, from the surveys that I'm coming in, it seems like it's been really helpful um, for you guys. So shout out to Tommy who puts these together for us on the marketing team. Um, I know he, he uh, sometimes wants to kill us because we're like, oh, and, and this, and this, and it's like, go away. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'll, just, I'll just share the screen here. Um, and Jules, just let me know when you, when you do see that. Okay. Yep, I see it. it. All right. So I'm just going to kick this off into full. There we go. So we're probably going to move to, to, um, smaller on the screen now. Um, so like I said, if you have any questions throughout, drop them in the Q&A, drop them in the chat, drop them in the comments on Facebook, um, and we'll make sure that we answer anything at all. There's a fly in my office and it's driving me crazy. Um, so Jules, you want to kick us off on lead gen and kind of give a little intro in to, to this? Yeah, for sure. So um, lead generation is something that um, is usually a topic of discussion with clients I speak to on a daily basis, um, especially given everything that's kind of happened with COVID. Uh, it's really been something that, um, you know, as people adjust to this new normal, um, you know, it's something that people are always like, well, you know, how can I make, um, you know, close to the same revenue I was making before, not being able to offer the same services, how can I get, you know, more recognition, that kind of thing. So um, throughout this, uh, you know, little presentation, uh, we're gonna talk about um, some different tools you can use, some different marketing tips, um, some ways that clients are, um, you know, uh, marketing themselves, um, getting leads in, um, but also ways to use e-commerce on your website um, to be able to sell additional items and things of that nature. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a good one. Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask throughout. Um, you can drop them in the Q and A or the chat and we will read them out loud and we will answer them. Yeah. I uh, Jules, you're going to pay attention to the Q and A just cause I don't have it in. Yeah. Um, it goes to full screen on mine. Okay. Um, so let's just start here. Um, I cover this a lot when I do presentations at conferences. Um, talking about like where funeral homes have kind of spent their time and their money and and how that's changed and um, most funeral homes today and for I do I talk to thousands of I teach thousands of funeral homes uh, funeral directors in a year and um, unfortunately so many of them are still here with their marketing you know they're you know they're still running those newspaper ads and they're still booking those radio spots and those TV ads and, and it's, it's expensive um, you know one thing I'll say usually to an audience is 
you know, just think about what you're spending in your marketing, whether it's these three areas, whether it's somewhere else. Um, if you want to get leads brought into your business, you have to put yourself out there. You got to market properly. You got to, you know, make sure people know what it is that you're doing. Um, I do think that a lot of funeral home marketing is, you know, it, it's changed so much. And uh, a lot of field doctors just haven't bridged that gap yet. And they're still, you know, just kind of comfortable in these areas, even though they know it costs them a fortune. They know it doesn't really do anything for them. They can't really pinpoint the results they get from these things. Um, but they just don't know the new way very well. So, so they keep spending money on this. And, and as a result, some of them are getting just lapsed by their, by their competition because some like the ones that are paying attention online are really growing and they're getting a lot of leads in. And we're going to show you a, a few of those examples um, today, but where funeral directors are spending their, their, their money and their time for marketing, it's just not lining up to where consumers have their eyeballs and their, you know, where their focus is. And today's consumers are digital, you know, they're, they spend on average four hours a day on their phones. They 74% of Facebook users check it daily. Um, consumers are changing and they're not looking at those newspapers. They're fast forwarding through commercials on TV. They're, you know, listening to things like Spotify where commercials aren't a thing anymore. And, um, you know, it's just, things are just really different. Uh, and Jill, feel free to jump in at any of these. Um, it's you also looking at, you know, as generational shifts are happening to where people are, you know, um, and this, you'll probably laugh at this, but you know, there's all of these uh, millennials right now that love using TikTok and Snapchat and, you know, just even this past weekend, um, Ashley's sister, Stephanie, um, for anyone who knows her, <laughs> hilarious, but she was like, let's make a TikTok video. And I was like, a TikTok video? I felt actually incredibly like old in that moment being like, what? Like, but it's the generation as things are changing where they're spending their time and allocating their time. Um, Facebook now actually, I feel is a place where you're seeing older um, generations. Um, and you're seeing the younger generations focused in on Snapchat, YouTube, um, Instagram, um, TikTok. Uh, and it's interesting to see how companies are starting to utilize those platforms to market to that younger generation. Mm -hmm. um, so being aware of where your consumers are coming from and being present in areas that you can be. And I'm not saying everyone should go and make a TikTok video, but I'm saying that people should just be aware that there are consumers that are utilizing those platforms. So, you know, I always see our clients usually teeter the most between Facebook and Instagram. Um, would you agree? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, no, totally. And to be honest with you, I, I see the results on both sides. I see, I see the Facebook results. I see the Instagram results. I do for funeral homes. I still think Facebook is where you need to be right now. I think that will change in the next little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just natural. It's, it's just a new form of marketing that's going to come and it's going to evolve. And that's, that's what the game is. Um, it's never going to, you know, just, you could get super comfortable with Facebook and then it evolves past. And then you gotta, you gotta focus your sites on something else, just like the newspaper, radio, TV, you know, you gotta, you know, you gotta just be okay with things changing because new opportunities come when things change. Um, I just had, just had Sheila write in on, uh, on Facebook and, this makes me, this makes me not very happy. Um, our radio station makes us advertise or they won't announce burial times. If we don't advertise, they will charge $80 for each announcement times that by 200 and it's expensive. That is like handcuffing you. And I don't like that. Um, that's too bad that you're going through that. Um, yeah. Uh, I, there's a lot of traditional, traditional businesses that are hanging on to whatever they can. And unfortunately, Sheila, you're, you're living through that one right now. That's too bad. Um, if anyone else has any, you know, comments on what, the, what they're going through and, and, you know, the experiences they have with traditional versus maybe the new age marketing, drop them in that Q and a or the live comments or, um, or in the chat, we'd love to hear and talk these things out with you guys. Um, I think it would be super helpful for people. Mm -hmm. I think too, like, you know, um, it's really unfortunate in the society and the world we're living in uh, today um, due to unforeseen circumstances of things that nobody really planned for this pandemic and the fact that there's, you know, you newspapers and things like that are still uh, kind of like strong arming funeral homes. That's really, you know, radio stations and th that's too bad. It's, uh, it's something where I totally understand businesses have to make money. Um, and I think that there is a reasonable to, way to do that. Um, 
but you know maybe it's a, a different kind of strategy opposed to saying if you you know if you don't advertise with us and it's going to cost you x yeah. amount because in turn that is what costs your families um, because yeah. you have to charge them for that unless you eat the cost which then eat into your profits right um so that's a that's a really um that's interesting i've never heard that so yeah. if anyone else is going through something like that yeah please do share it i'm curious to hear what others are experiencing i also am curious to know who here still uses twitter um yeah when using twitter here drop a drop into the q a or the chat um because i feel like that's something that uh is really i'm really curious about you know twitter used to be a hot 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 platform um and it's now i'm just i don't see it as being as popular anymore so i'm just curious yeah absolutely um, so one of the things that I, I always like to start out when we're talking about marketing or we're talking about lead generation, um, it is very hard to generate quality leads for your business if your website's lagging. Um, so I always, every time we start a marketing plan or a marketing strategy for a funeral home or for even our own business, um, we make sure that website is in tip top shape. So if you are looking to get more leads this year, um, start at your website, um, you know, make sure it has the right content on it. Content is so important. Um, you know, those, what you write on your website is, is basically think of it as like a big circle that you, you point everything to. It's where Google goes. If somebody, if a family has a question there's, and they're typing their, their question to Google at 2 AM, which you know, they are, um, it's that's your website's either coming up or it's not. Um, you know, the content you push out on your Facebook page, if it's a lead generation, you're probably, unless you're using a lead ad, which, and that's a type of ad on Facebook, but they, they those are more expensive. Um, you could, you can drive them right to your website, drive them right to a landing page or a page on your website where they can learn more about that specific thing or download something or do something. But I do treat your website as when I, in my eyes anyways, as the base of your entire marketing efforts. And if it's not in tip top shape and the content's not there and the education is not there, um, it's just, it's going to be really hard for you to generate the leads that you want to. Um, another just important thing here is call to actions. Those are those little tiny buttons that, or, um, you know, words at the end of maybe it's a, maybe it's a page on um, the importance of pre-planning and you created a nice page because uh, you learned in your, uh, let's say keyword research when you were figuring out what families are typing into Google to find you, you learn that a lot of people are looking for the benefits of pre-planning. Mm -hmm. um, so you create a page on your site that says benefits of pre-planning. You put out some really great content to educate them. And at the end is what's a call to action, uh, usually built throughout as well, but it tells them what to do next. A lot of, a lot of people, will, a lot of businesses will just write content and not even tell the consumer where to go next. So they read it and they're like, great, you understand now. And now you have no idea what to do next to contact me or, or whatever the next step is. Mm -hmm. um, so those are all very, very important. Um, I did mention keywords. I think I we covered this a couple of weeks ago. Um, but if you don't know what your families are typing into Google to find you, um, you're missing a big, big step in your marketing. You're missing a big, big step in your lead generation. Um, there, it's totally free. It's a free tool from Google. It's called Google AdWords Keyword Tool. If you just Google it, you will you'll see it come up. Um, and it will actually let you put in that what city you're in, um, the service areas you cover, um, and then it will let, let you choose from a list. Basically, you can choose funeral homes, pre-planning, uh, cemetery, cremation, whatever it is. You'll see a big list. Um, and it will actually tell you um, what your families in your specific region type into Google to find you. And it will spit out a list probably of, depending on where you are, I would say anywhere from 400 to 2000 keywords that families actually type into Google to find you and how often they do that every month. Um, and that's the type of words and the phrases that you, that families are actually using that you want to get onto your website. Um, that's, what's going to build the content. That's, what's going to build the education. That's, what's going to give you your base. So now once you have your base done, you can do Facebook marketing properly. You can do Google AdWords properly. Um, you know, you have somewhere to link them into to actually get in touch with you. Mm -hmm. So if I knew, I know that's kind of a lot there, but if anyone has questions, just drop them in and we can, you know, continue to talk that out. We have two comments that came in. So Rich, uh, you guys have a Twitter. That's awesome. What do you post from the business on Twitter? Curious about that. 
And from Edward, traditional media advertising is in a weird endless cycle. Less people buying ads from these sources, so the pricing keeps going up for those that do, which then causes them to not invest in these types of ads anymore. Bang on. Yeah. So true. So it's one of those things where why not get more creative to provide a value and a service, lower your price so you're not being outrageous, and figure out more ways to get more people to want to work with you. Yeah. It's food for thought, um, yeah. in my opinion, but I do, um, I'm, yeah, it, you're right. It is, uh, it's something, I mean, how many people on here still have families, um, you know, that, that want kind of the same old super traditional style, um, funeral, um, you know, do, do people still have that again, given COVID our restrictions are different. So we're not able to offer those same services to have some families holding out for those, um, just out of curiosity and, you know, to hear what others have to say as well. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I wonder if there's conversation around that of how do you bridge that gap from what people are used to in the past to what you're able to deliver and service on today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And those services that you do offer, you know, if it's not on your, your virtual storefront, your website, this is, this is where people are finding you at 2 AM. This everybody, I don't want to say everybody, but there's probably a very, very high percentage of families that go to your website before they even talk to you. And mm -hmm. if, you, and if you've lost them and you, you haven't provided education, you don't list the services that you offer. You don't talk about what it is that you do. Um, you're not a resource for education to help them with all these things. If that's not all set up um, and your competitor is, um, there's a good chance you might lose a lot of calls. Um, so it does, it starts here. Um, yeah. Make sure this is in good shape. It's for those of you who are frontrunner clients on the, on the webinar, this is very easy for you to do. Um, super easy to edit your own site. We give you a ton of content out the gate um, and, and just tell you to modify it. Um, we yeah. have a ton of tools that you can build in. It's just, it's super easy. Just make sure you're, whoever you are, you are using for your website, just make sure it's, you know, it's built for you to be scalable and to add things to it. And if you haven't updated your website in two years, you're probably, you know, you're, you're probably, you're, you're probably not generating the leads that you should be online right now. Yeah. One thing to add to is the value in um, a editing your content more frequently as your business changes and the services you offer change. Um, same with products though. Um, there's many times where, you know, um, there's some more slide where we can talk about this, but um, there's times where clients sometimes offer a product, but they forget to take them off their website and they've had them there for the past nine years and that product's no longer carried. And you get a family who goes on there and they see a product and they're like, oh, hey, yeah, I want that product. And you don't have access to that anymore. Um, that's also really important, especially again, if you're gonna utilize any of those tools that allow people to come fill out forms, maybe a range, you wanna make sure you have the most relevant information. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing that I would add to that is I always use this. Um, so for those of you who don't know, I have a background in palliative care. Um, and I would remember, you know, um, families going and looking up funeral home websites, uh, online before going to visit them. And one of the things I always tell clients is just make sure that whatever you put on your funeral home website would be the same level of service that someone would receive if they were to walk into your firm. But also if you're going to put photos of your facilities, make sure it's your facilities, not stock. Um, there's been a few times where clients are like, oh, I just want to put this rendering on. And we're like, e yeah, not a good idea. Because again, it's perception. If you're getting somebody coming to you and they assume and think that's, that's what they're going to get, if they get a different um, perception or experience and they visit you, that's how people create those nasty, bad reviews, right? So making sure that your stuff is relevant and, you know, current is really important. Yeah. Yeah. I hear from a lot of field owners too that will talk to me about the, all the, materials they have available in their arrangement office and they say you know when we get the family in um we open up all these these things and we talk to them about all their options and they and as soon as they say it they say it like that they're like oh my gosh like that should be on our website because how many families do you not get the opportunity to get in the arrangement office because that stuff you're holding out until they walk through the front door and it's just you know the world's changed we're not in that walk through the front door mentality anymore first and you know we got to get that stuff online so everything from you know your content and those this the, what you do in the arrangement office if it's not on your website you I, I promise you if you get that stuff out there um and and 
get it on your base and get it out in your marketing channels, um, more families will be coming to you because most funeral directors are keeping things tight to their chest right now. Um, and it's just, you know, they're just, they're missing a lot of opportunities. So hopefully, hopefully you walk away today, um, you know, just thinking about what you do at your business and, and, you know, what opportunity are you leaving on the table, um, uh, because of maybe some things that just aren't set up properly or you haven't spent enough time somewhere. Yeah. Um, talking to your website to um, get the right tools on your site. Content's great. Education is great. Those words that are there, the pictures that are there are amazing. Um, but the tools that exist on your site, these are things like an online quote builder, which we're going to cover how one of our, one of our clients used the online quote builder and now are just, just crushing it in there. <laughs> I was just talking to him actually and teasing and he said he almost died when his numbers doubled. And I was like, well, hold up. You can't die yet. No pun intended. <laughs> it was pretty funny. funny. Joking with so it. But yeah, it's, it's so true. Um, especially when you have the consumers today that are sort of, they don't really have much of a choice. They need to do those virtual arrangements. So making sure that you have those tools available to them um, and, and being in line with what's happening. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's so important for that user experience. Um, just because you have something on your website, whether it's a quote builder, whether it's a pre-need where they can pre-arrange online, whether it's a, um, you know, a Zoom integration where they can actually attend a virtual meeting, um, any of those things that you're starting to offer, um, it, they are just options. They're not a be all end all. You may attract people because of the options. Um, some people may choose to not use them and that's okay. That's, that's what options are for. And you're showing that you're flexible enough to give them the experience that they want when you put these things out there online. So true. Um, yeah. Being in line with customers is really, really important. Jules, you can cover some of these stats here if you want and talk well, about one thing I was actually going to say is if Mike or Sheila are here, let's, uh, let's pull them in for a second and let's just pick on them for one sec. Um, this, these guys, um, for the, you know, we're kind of like hemming and hawing about adding pricing to their website. And I would love for everyone to hear about the experiences that they have had in just a short window of time, like a couple of weeks since they have put pricing on their website. Um, Mike, Sheila, I don't know if you are, either of you are available to um, jump on to the call quick and just chat, but it would be really amazing um, to hear from your perspective about that because you guys teetered for quite some time about whether to add pricing, um, not add pricing, uh, you know, will that deter people? And it'd be really great if, um, you know, you guys could tell the successes that have happened. So if you're around and you can chat, let us know. Just drop us a message. Yeah, Mike, you are, I see on Zoom, Sheila's on Facebook. Um, but Mike, if you are good to go, just shoot a chat, uh, let, let us know and I'll unmute you whenever you are ready. Um, I don't know what you're doing. I know you say to the family at two or something and I know you're ahead of us in, in time. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I will get him, Mike, here as Sheila. Oh, it's Sheila on. Sheila is Mike today. Oh. Okay, are you good? You're good, Sheila, if I unmute you then? Here as Sheila. Cool. Present. Uh, okay, let's see. I just unmuted you. She didn't actually confirm if she was ready, so. <laughs> ready or not. Ready or not. Sheila, are you there? <laughs> Maybe not yet. Might be muted. Oh, Sheila. Okay, let Sheila tell I'll us. Just her right now. Just let me know when you're good to go. We'll keep going. Josie, you want to keep going on the stats? Yeah. So, um, forty-six percent of consumers are open to doing virtual arrangements, um, which we just chatted about. Seventy-three percent say it's important to pre-plan a service. Um, so that's up from 58%. So pre-planning is really important, especially when you make it really simple for somebody to do so. Um, remember the internet today is the world's oyster. So you can literally jump from one site to another site in seconds. If you find something you're looking for easily, great. When you find it challenging to find something, remember consumers can skip, they can jump around. Um, 52% won't work with companies that do not show um, pricing online. So many funeral home websites are missing um, 
and the tools. And that was supposed to be a separate line. That was me. Oh, hi. <laughs> okay. Um, are missing uh, tools, but also there's a lot of resources that come along with that, right? You can put um, pricing options, but you don't have to limit your services to being, um, you know, oh, just you only can have like these options. You could put a few options up and make it clear that you have additional services and offerings if people are interested. Um, you can allow people to build their own custom um, arrangement too. Um, so again, making sure options are available. It doesn't have to be restrictive. Um, make sure it's not overwhelming. You don't want to have 700 options of different mm -hmm. services on your site. Um, but make sure that you know you've got those three, four, five, maybe six. We have some clients that have six and it works well for them. Um, but just knowing your market and knowing your area um, and kind of what is the most common areas of what people gravitate to. Yeah, absolutely. And just even looking at these like virtual arrangements, how many of you put in place the option to have virtual arrangements and I'll take it a step further if you did give the option for virtual arrangements and you still plan to offer that which I hope you do um, is that on your website you know just because you offer it does not mean people know that you offer it um, just because you've made the commitment you said yep yeah, I'm in for virtual arrangements and I have pre-planning available on my website and you know I have this online quote book that's going to show my prices how do you know Oh, hi. If you don't <laughs> talk about those, oh no. And that's Sheila. Hang on, let me get it. Sorry. Hey, that's okay. How are you? All right. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. Not to put you on the spot, but I'm super jacked about, like, I love your emails of, like, excitement. <laughs> and I just really think it's important because there are a many, many, many people um, in your shoes that kind of teeter on the balance of, oh, like, do I show pricing? Do I not? So if you wouldn't mind, maybe just give us your honest feedback. Well, we, we went ahead and went online and we said, the heck with it. We're going to go, we're going to put our prices online and be done with it. So we went full pricing. Uh, we had families calling us from Alberta and Halifax doing everything online. And if you know, Newfoundland is on the East Coast. Alberta is about a three, four hour time difference. So they thought it was great. They could make their arrangements online, pick what they wanted. They had a budget to stick to. And with eDocuSign, it was perfect because we sent all the information to them. And two weeks later, they showed up at the funeral home. We actually got to meet them. So trying to get the travel time to get into Newfoundland, get your uh, paperwork on order. Yeah, get everything in there and make sure that the government is allowing you in and you had your two weeks uh, uh, COVID uh, isolation done and it, it just worked out perfect because they knew they were in touch with us at all times. They knew what they were spending and there was no surprises when they walked into the door. That's awesome. So Sheila, do you have to give any um, feedback to people who are hemming and hawing and kind of like, mm, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this. Like, what about my competitors? What would be your advice to those people kind of stuck in the middle that aren't sure what to do? We have three competitors, uh, two competitors, sorry, within a mile to two miles of us. Neither has their prices online we are the only ones and that's how we've got these last three or four funerals was because people are away and they didn't have to go searching they didn't have to go into a funeral home to get pricing they knew exactly what they were spending also I had a phone call yesterday from someone who was talking to one of the competitors and that of course, they're not happy with me, which is normal because they never like me, but they had to adjust all their prices to match mine because they were so much more expensive. But isn't that amazing when you're the first to do it and everyone has to play catch up? It like, is wonderful. I warn of this all the time in presentations to say you can either be the one that everyone's adjusting to because you're the one that was progressive enough to make the move or you can be the one that sits there when they do it and go, oh God, what are we going to do now? And that's right. Good for you guys. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. They were really afraid of, and I guess it's not fair so much as they didn't want the, the hassle and 
you know one of the competitors you just don't like the hassle of it mm -hmm. so to me there's no hassle once it's there it's transparent there's no extra charges mm -hmm. and people are really happy to see well okay that look that now I know what I can spend I don't have to go in yeah. go to the funeral home everybody's wearing masks mm -hmm. I got to drive an hour just to get to the funeral home <laughs> no nope. you got internet we got you covered that's, that's awesome, awesome. Yeah, thanks so much for sharing that. Um, yeah. I just knew that it would be something that um, others would find value in. Um, and, you know, I'll, if people are, are hesitant, I'll be sure to send them your direction. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks, Sheila. Thank you. All right. That's awesome. Okay. Good for them. I'm so happy for them. Yeah. Um, okay, so the online quote builder, we talked a little bit about this. This is a tool that it will help you generate leads. Um, this is what Sheila was talking about, um, what she did. Um, we don't have her as a case study, so I guess consider her another one that talks about how it worked for them. And her last four funerals have really been as a result of putting that online and letting people use the quote builder. Um, it is just, it, Jules, you want to talk about the quote builder? Because I know you, you talk to a ton of funeral homes about this tool. Yeah, so I love this tool. I get super excited about it because there's so much opportunity and potential. There's a ton of flexibility on how this works and how it can be set up from colors to, um, you know, structural things and so on. Um, you can easily allow families to come here, do an arrangement, click a package, boom, all the way through, pick a product. They can fully check out, um, sign documents. You can also have it so families can go and fill everything out, but not pay. You have to approve what they send through and then they can pay once it's been approved and you can send the forms and you can also just do it so that they just fill out the information and you don't allow them to pay. Um, and you follow up with them there afterwards. Um, it helps answer questions. It doesn't leave people wondering like, oh, did I miss something? If things are packaged or laid out in a manner of what's included with what, it's very simple. It's also really great for lead generation if you're um, doing social media marketing, search engine optimization, um, or you know, doing anything like maybe a, a pre-need um, counselor, maybe you have a dedicated pre-need person. It's a great place for them to direct people to. If you're in the community doing anything with hospice groups and things like that, giving them a link directly to the website to go find more information. Mm -hmm. And you know, if they're ready to commit to the arrangement or the pre-plan, they can do it all online. Um, so it's very informative. Um, it can be very simple. Um, you can make it more complex if it's something you wanna do. Um, I always like to caution people to keep it simple, um, but it's amazing because it's personalized to each customer. So it's not the same for everybody, which is awesome. I have a little video. Do you want me to play it? I yeah. found it in the folder. Let me, uh, just let me know when you can see it. Yeah. Make sure videos, it's really loud. Just tell me if it's too loud. I'll just sure. play. I'll just jump back to the presentation here. Um, but if anyone has any questions on that, you may have some too after we after we uh, look through the presentation here, uh, mm -hmm. the case studies of the clients who use these tools. Um, but Jules has like a ton of links she can send you. Um, I'll just drop Jules' email in if you don't already have it. Um, yeah, we also have lots of clients that are using it that are really great if you want to chat with them um, about their experience as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's awesome. It's uh, like I said, tons of personalization. And I love the ability that you can change the colors and things like that. Yeah. Um, so let's keep moving on. I will cover the quote builder through a case study from Aaron's information. Um, mm -hmm. Online pre need tools. This is another one. Um, just ask yourself these questions. These are going to be these. I we only picked the top things. Like if I was a funeral home right now, these are the things that I would do online to generate leads because I've seen the marketing side. I've seen the 
I've seen a lot of our clients do these. I can't obviously talk about them all. There's, there's a lot of them, but um, these are probably the top ones that I, and I know Jules would agree, um, that are just making a ton of difference for lead generation for clients. So when it comes to pre-need, can they learn about pre-need on your site? Um, ask yourself these questions. Do you have content there? Do you have downloadable information that you ca help you capture leads? You don't know who's looking at your site and who's reading it for education, but you do know when somebody downloads a pre-planning checklist or um, shows interest. It's how you actually can tell who's on your site. One way you can tell who's on your site, unless you have like crazy marketing automation software, like, uh, but I just, I know a lot of you don't just don't have that yet. Um, but can they download information? Can they pre-arrange online? And, and another thing too, this is actually an involvement of Frontrunner, but I remember in the early days of Frontrunner, um, you know, somebody, a family would go on one of our client sites and they would arrange, do a pre-arrangement and they would get it by form. Like it would have, it would have, it would be like a form delivered to the funeral director's email. Um, and now this, this online pre-arrangement tool actually writes a pre-need record right into the Frontrunner system. So, um, you know, whether you're using Frontrunner, maybe you don't have that set up, get in touch with Jules, she'll get you hooked up. Um, if not, if you're using somebody else, um, you know, just check in to see if it does that because it saves you a lot of time and it just kind of connects everything, which is really great. Yeah, absolutely. It's great. To, it's great. And it can also be personalized too. So lots yeah. of flexibility with that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another, this lead generation, this is kind of more revenue generation, to be honest with you, but, um, it, do you have the option online? Just think to yourself to order flowers. Can your families order flowers? Can they order urns? Um, can they order cremation jewelry? Um, some funeral homes love the idea of ordering flowers and some are like, oh, I don't know. Um, I use a local florist. Well, it, your, your, whoever you use for website should connect into your local florist. I know for our clients we do. Um, but it, generates you so much additional revenue. And I know that, you know, a lot of your homes just need that right now. Um, so don't, again, it's options and the flowers that come through your website, um, you can still have a, a relationship with many florists. These are just the ones that come right through your website and you're making it convenient for families um, to be able to do that. You don't want to cut that out just because maybe um, you know, sometimes I hear a few doctors who just have a hard time with it because they're not used to e-commerce and, you know, this is something new for them. Um, ordering urns, I still see that very, very seldom, to be honest, on funeral home sites. Can they order urns? If not, they're probably going through Amazon and you're losing out to Amazon or other. Just do, do me a favor and search for cremation urns on Google. Pretend you're a family. Go and search and see what comes up. Um, you know, you'll probably see Amazon come up. Same thing with cremation jewelry. Uh, just don't leave those opportunities on the table because those, every time you can serve a family, it doesn't have to be a full blown a funeral service. Maybe you get to know that family because they purchased an urn after the fact, or maybe they purchased a cremation jewelry piece, or it was just something they hadn't experienced, ordered flowers, they had an experience with your funeral home that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. Um, so market your business online. Let's jump into the case studies. Um, yeah. Once you get your base set up, your website with the tools, the content, the education that you need, um, now you want to take it and actually market yourself. Um, and two ways I would do this. There are many, many ways to market yourself. These are just the ones that I feel like, and I know Jules um, works with a lot of clients on this too, but search and social, Facebook and Google um, are two really key ways to generate leads for the business. Um, it lets you reach people. You can target people by age, by gender, by literally you name it, you could probably target them on Facebook, um, which you can't do with traditional, you know, you put an ad out in the newspaper, you put an ad up in a magazine or on the radio and you can't control who listens to it or watch it. So your message has to apply to every generation, every age group, every gender, every interest. Um, when it comes to Facebook, you can really target based on those things and you can create different messaging. And that's what we do on in the agency side. We create those messages um, and make sure they target the right people. Um, in search, you know, it, some people shy away from advertising on Google because they're scared it's going to cost a lot. If nobody in your area is, use, is using AdWords or using Google ads, um, it could be very affordable and you're leaving a lot of lead generation on the table. So just know those things. And if you don't know them, reach out to us and, and we'll give you the information to make the best decision you can for your business. Mm -hmm. 
So Jules, you want to talk about them? I know you're super jacked as of this morning. So take air and cremation away. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is the client that I was uh, mentioning. Um, so th these guys, we actually, Sean was on one of our webinars with us. Um, he's great. Um, I chat with him often. I'm just chatting with him this morning via text. And, you know, we were just chatting about um, kind of just how business has been for him. And so I was, you know, asking like, Hey, what did you do last year versus this year? And that's when he made the comment, like our business is almost doubled. And like, you know, I almost died when I saw those numbers. I was like, hold up, you can't die yet. Um, but it's really true. What he's done is he's really understood his market. He understands what his consumers want and what they will do online. Um, so he has the ability right now on his website where people can go through, make a full arrangement. They can do the whole process. It's very simple. And he also will accommodate those families that maybe aren't as comfortable with the technology stuff. He has a storefront location, very, you know, it's not not huge. It's a great size for him and his team. And if, you know, he doesn't typically do those in-person arrangements, unless it's something that somebody absolutely needs and he will do that. He does take calls via phone. Um, but he's already at 514 cases in the first eight months of this year compared to 417 total last year. So putting him on pace for 700, how freaking awesome is that? Um, so then I was like, Hey, okay. So like, how many cases do you get going through your online builder per month? And he was shooting off all these crazy numbers. I was literally like, oh my gosh. So in January, he's had, you know, 42 people go through in February 37. And these are people that are actually going through the process, finishing it and not anyone who may be um, still pre-need and things like that. Um, so to see these types of numbers and volumes is so incredible. Um, in how something can really work online and how having those um, pricing options, uh, you know, information readily available to a consumer can really, really narrow in on that process um, and get people to go through that process that you're trying to get them to utilize. Um, I'm a firm believer that if you believe in something and you can get behind it, you can get almost everybody to get into it. You just have to be, you know, educated enough to, walk someone through this if they're on the phone with you say hey go to my website go here fill out this information um he allows people to purchase items on his website as well uh which is really important so um he has taken the uh quote builder to a whole new level he's spent a lot of time and energy into perfecting how he wants it um to work um and if you are curious to see what it looks like um we will drop a link to his website you can go and check it out um I think you have the link, Ash. I'll find it. It's just Aaron's cremation. Um, but do go check it out um, and see kind of how he has things on his website. He, it, it's, it's very simple um, and, and clean. So um, I'm super- You don't have to do it alone too is another thing. You know, like we were Jules and I'm sure Robin, I'm just guessing yeah. he was involved, but I imagine there was a team of behind him to get this going and saying like guiding him along the way and- getting him more comfortable. And so even if this seems scary, I'm sure this was scary to um, Sean at the beginning as well. Yeah. Um, it was new, right? Yeah, um, so he did, he was with, he came to us in November of last year. And oh, wow. um, when we first got talking about it, he was hesitant 100%. I mean, he didn't really know me that well. Um, one of his uh, business partners um, knew me uh, from another location we take care of. So he was really trusting me that, you know, what we were going to do was going to work and how things were going to, you know, work out for their firm. So um, definitely we guide you through that process for sure. Absolutely. And if anyone has questions, please reach out to Jules. Um, she yeah. can talk more about that. Another one, just a lead generation um, that worked really well with um, Hallie Olson and Murphy. We did a vet's memorial campaign on social media and search. Basically, it targeted people between the ages of 45 to 65 plus um, with military interests, included a 25 mile radius of the service area of the funeral home. And this was actually the agency that ran this. So if anyone has specific questions, we can get into a little bit more detail. Um, but basically, we created a vet, uh, the Veterans Memorial Benefits Guide, um, put it up on their website to be able to download, and then drove people to it. Um, so we had the, 
you know, we created the landing page up on their website. We, we put the form in so we could track who was downloading it. And they basically spent $71.94. It had 118 people click to it um, from Google and from Facebook, reached 35, just over 3,500 people. Um, they had 32 leads created this year from this campaign, eight leads in the last month. Um, and just, in the, just from those eight last month, they actually had four arrangements. Um, so they followed up and they actually got four arrangements from it. Um, so this, you know, spending $71.94 um, led to a $20,000 uh, revenue um, line yeah. item from just one campaign. Awesome. So awesome. talk about something small that if it's just thought out properly, it can generate big results. Another one, I think this is the last one we're going to cover before we jump off, but uh, Brown's Memorial Funeral Home. This was just social media campaign for pre-need. Um, just very very um, quick to give you an idea of what we did in the agency. We built a pre-planning booklet to record final wishes. We put it up on their website in a, on a page with a form so we could track who was downloading it. We do put quite a bit of tracking measures in that, um, which is, I'm not going to go over that, but we do track quite a bit. Um, and we targeted special interests of people 60 to 65 plus within 15 miles of their service area. So you can kind of see very similar campaign style. Um, it's just, you know, it's not, that's just marketing. Um, and if you aren't getting leads like this and you're like, wow, I'd really love that, talk to us. Um, you know, you can run these things yourself um, or you can use the agency, whatever you wanna do, we're here to help you. Um, that's why we do these, these Wednesdays with Frontrunner. Um, for the Browns and Memorial Funeral Home pre-planning campaign, 20, 28 leads came in in three months. They spent $189, um, cost about $6.77 a lead, and in potential revenue, they're still they're still working through this campaign and, and, and converting them, um, but $83,000 in potential revenue from this campaign, um, and they have a pre need team that's working through these now. So um, just really exciting. That's the end of it there, but if anyone has any questions, um, and if you're looking for more lead generation, spend some time, spend a couple minutes after this webinar, just think through some of the things we said about content on your website, um, education on your website, different tools, maybe some of the different types of campaigns you saw, um, and really think about, you know, what is, we're coming, you know, nearing the end of 2020, what does next year look like for you? You know, what do you want to do for next year? Where do you want to go and set your goals now and say, you know what, I'm going to really take this on and I want more leads for this business and I want to be celebrating like Sean from Aaron's Cremation who doubled the business in one year just from literally just from adding two tools and marketing it. Um, yeah it's it's awesome I think that you know one of the things that's really cool is um never feel like oh gosh like oh I just you know, like we don't do that kind of stuff. Don't get down on it. Get yeah. excited for the opportunity. Look at it and go, okay, we're here currently, but there's so much opportunity for us in the future. And I'm one of those people as you can't dwell on the past. You got to look forward to the next day and you have to be able to look at, okay, where am I going today? And you know, what's coming next and being able to be prepared for that and being able to have those tools readily available, um, make a really big difference, um, for experience for families and, um, people who might be stopping by. So um, I do challenge everybody to take that time as well, just to think about where you're at and where you want to be, what your goals are. And especially now that things have changed and, you know, they're changing continually. Um, it's like every day we're learning new things about, okay, what we're allowed to do, what we're not allowed to do and how we're going to handle things. So look at this as an opportunity to get yourself um, in that place that you want to be going forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we'll, so that's the end of today, this episode, um, but if you, we'll stick around for two minutes. If you have questions, drop them in. If you need to reach out to Jules, her email, I dropped it in. It's just jules at frontrunner360.com. Um, reach out to us. Let's, you know, make sure that you're on it for next year and, and you know, you're celebrating some, like, I, I guarantee Mike and Sheila never thought, you know, last year they never really probably pictured where they were going to be this year. And now they're like, oh my gosh, like so much has changed. And same with Sean from Aaron's Cremation. You know, you can do this. So we'll yeah. stick around, answer any questions. Um, next week we are, next week we are doing, let me just get to the upcoming episodes. Um, next week, September 2nd, although it is the long weekend. We didn't really talk about that. Why don't we get back to, why don't we send that out in the recap? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll let you know in the recap. Right, right now we're kind of trying to talk about um, like blogging and things like that. But 
uh, we'll send you out a recap. In the recap email, we'll talk about next week. It, it is a long weekend. We know that that's going to do to, you know, everyone's going to want to enjoy that, that weekend. Um, so we may just postpone next week and do the week mm -hmm. after, but um, we'll be in touch on that. But feel free to drop any questions and we'll answer. Um, Rich, can we rewatch these videos if we miss them? Yep, there, so there's a, let me send you a link here, Rich. I'll send you a link where you can watch all of the past episodes of Fridays with, or not Fridays anymore. It was Fridays. Wednesdays with Frontrunner. <laughs> Wednesdays with Frontrunner, although, oh, Tommy did change it to Wednesdays. Tommy, you're on it, love it. Um, here's a link that you can see all of the past episodes. So anybody watching this, you can see, um, just go, if you scroll down, it's, they're literally all broken out by date. You can click through and see what they are. Aaron's cremation is one of the guest speakers on, um, I don't know what month he was in. I think it was back in June. I think it might've been June too. Thanks everyone. Have a great day.